Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of Two Can Plays where the dirt flies and the engines roar louder than blue thunder. <laughs> Today we've got some exciting news too. Count them two. New preview trailers have dropped for the new officially licensed Monster Jam game called Monster Jam Showdown. And I have been watching and re-watching them to get as much info as I possibly can. So let me tell you, there are a few things that you probably have missed. Let's break down those trailers frame by frame. Let's go. Okay, so the official trailer is only about 30 seconds long and it has a lot of flashy pre-rendered video footage. That means that there's not a lot of actual gameplay here, but it's worth taking a look at to get a feel of the overall vibe of the game. So first off, we're here in the stands, cheering for Megalodon, waiting for his freestyle run to start. Then there's a close-up of Meggy, and it's insane. The graphics are looking pretty sick. Then we cut to a race in the desert with the usual suspects, Max D, Gravedigger, Monster Mutt Dalmatian, plus, of course, the new darling of Monster Jam, Thunder Roarus. Then we cut to an extreme bird's eye view of Blue Thunder racing down an icy canyon. Then a quick cut to an extreme slow-mo shot of Megalodon doing his picture perfect backflip. And I'd just like to add, I love this little bounce effect that his fin has as it lands. It's just a nice little touch that I hope makes it into the actual game and it's not just here for the trailer. Then we cut to Zombie and El Toro Loco duking it out in the Ice Canyon race. A quick cinematic shot of Gravedigger coming off of a jump. I, I could be wrong about this, but it just seems like this shot feels like the camera zooming in on your truck after you cross the finish line. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just something that they arranged for this trailer, but that's what it feels like to me. But then we're back to the Ice Canyon, and the only thing I took note here is that the damage to El Toro Loco in the back here, it looks very much like the damage that you'd get in Steel Titans. Back to Megalodon, who finishes his freestyle with a jump cut straight to the title screen with coming 2024 displayed front and center and the crowd goes wild ah! <laughs> so before we get into the second trailer let's talk about release dates real quick how long from announcement trailers like this to release does it usually take so typically three to six months is the average for big releases like this so we could potentially see a summer release uh, which, you know, that would be fantastic. But let's dig a little bit deeper and see if we can narrow it down a little bit. Monster Jam Showdown is actually being developed by Milestone, which actually is the same studio that made Hot Wheels Unleashed and Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. That alone makes me super excited because both Hot Wheels games are really well done with maybe one exception, monster trucks. I don't like the way that uh, I get bullied around as a monster truck. Like as a monster truck, I should be the one bullying everybody else around, right? I'm big, I'm beefy, I should be knocking people off the road, but instead the cars come underneath me and send me flying off the track and I don't like it. That's the only thing I don't like about Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, it's the way that monster trucks work. But here's the deal, cars in Hot Wheels Unleashed, they're meant to be Hot Wheels, right? They're meant to be small little diecast miniatures. From what I can tell, Monster Jam Showdown is actually meant to be more of an arcade style action driving game. So hopefully, the game will behave a little bit differently than the Monster Trucks and Hot Wheels Unleashed, hopefully. <laughs> but we were talking about release dates. Okay, so the announcement trailer for Hot Wheels Unleashed dropped in February of 2021, and then the game released in September of 2021. So that made it seven months between the announcement and the release, give or take. Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, on the other hand, was announced May 31st and released the middle of October, making it about five months. Now, when you're making a sequel game like Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, most of the hard work is already done for you. The engine's already been built. Core of the game is already done for you. All you're really doing is fleshing out some of the features, adding new features, adding a ton of new cars, that kind of stuff. So the game development for a sequel like that probably didn't take quite as long. There wasn't a whole lot of polish that they needed to add to it. So really it's no surprise that it took less time to make Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 than it did to make Unleashed 1. So what does that mean for the release of Showdown? Well, realistically, I'm looking forward to an early fall release, maybe late August, early September, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they push it all the way to right before Christmas, maybe November, October, um, but yeah, you never know. Okay, so let's take a look at the second trailer. And personally, this one I'm a little bit more excited about because it actually shows gameplay. So first off, we're back here at the Snowy Canyon, which by the way, is something that we desperately needed in Steel Titans. We needed some more environments. 
Zombie goes flying into this cave and actually hits the roof of his truck on the ceiling of the cave, which made me chuckle a little bit. Off to the right, you've got Thunderorus, Max D, Megalodon. They're all coming around the right side of this lower path, while our player driving El Toro Loco hits a jump and lands right behind Monster Mutt Dalmatian. As they round the corner, you can see that the slippery physics of the ice-covered surface come into play here. I really like the idea of having different surfaces to deal with. Imagine having a thick, muddy arena to contend with, or even trying to do a backflip on a frozen ramp. How cool would that be? Okay, so they catch up to the rest of the racers who are rounding the mountain from the other direction. You hear El Toro Loco hit a boost, and you can actually see the boost meter drop as he hits a small ramp, which launches him onto the track. You can also see that Thunder Roarus is in the lead and that Zombie is nowhere to be seen. Maybe that cave wasn't the shortcut he was hoping it would be. <laughs> but joining the group now is Blue Thunder. I don't know where he came from, but here he is. It doesn't matter though, because now we cut to Megalodon doing a crazy bicycle, which to be quite honest, actually seems a bit unrealistic and gravity defying to me. So like if we were playing BMMG or even Steel Titans, there's no way that this bicycle would have stayed up for as long as it did. Meggy just seems to kind of hover there as the player applies the brakes at the end of the trick and the points are all added up. I do like though, that there was a multiplier added for going that extra long distance with the bicycle. He does a quick little donut, which by the way, the AI didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> he then lines up for a picture-perfect backflip, which I think we already saw in the first trailer. Then we cut to Gravedigger racing in a desert environment, which gave me and pretty much everybody else who watched the video major Steel Titans vibes. Ahead of on the left is Max D and on the right is Zombie. And as we continue, we see that the left path actually jumps over the right path as Blue Thunder demonstrates for us. As we come around the corner, we see that El Toro Loco is ahead of Zombie and Monster Mutt Dalmatian is the first to this colorful jump, which as we approach, we see that it sends us soaring up and over Thunder Roarus and Max D. Then we get to see where the left path meets up with the right path. I love the verticality that we've seen on both tracks showcase so far. The cave, the over under figure eight here, it's all very refreshing and fun. The trailer then cuts to that cinematic finish line view of Gravedigger that we saw in the first trailer, and then to a tire cam as Gravedigger lands. Now in this scene, the order of the trucks is all jumbled up, and I think that this most likely is a different race entirely. It's cut in here at this point just to showcase some of the more creative camera angles that the game has. Gravedigger then races towards the camera, and we cut to the title screen with that coming 2024 sign again. Phew. What a ride, huh? Are you as excited as I am? I know you are. <laughs> okay, so let's talk roster for a minute. So far, we've not seen anything really too surprising. All of the trucks are owned by Fell Motorsports, the owners of the Monster Jam franchise, Megalodon, El Toro Loco, Max D, Gravedigger, Monster Mutt Dalmatian, Zombie, Blue Thunder, and of course, the newest sensation, Thunder Roarus. Now, each race showed eight racers, and this is eight trucks, so potentially that could be the full roster. Uh, but I don't think so. <laughs> so who's most likely to be in Showdown? Well, let's take a look at Steel Titans 1 and 2 to give us some clues as to who might be in Showdown. The first and most obvious answer is Variants. Spin Master recently announced the return of the Fire and Ice series, and those are most definitely fan favorites. I know I would love to see some Fire and Ice variants return to a Monster Jam game, and I think if they could time the release of the game and the Spin Master toy line, that would definitely drive up some toy sales. Then there's the Overcast, Gold, and Inverse variants that were already in Steel Titans, Max D Black, El Toro Loco Black, and El Toro Loco Yellow, maybe a few Gravedigger variants like yeah, Grandma Gravedigger, some of the Anniversary variants, that would be nice as well. But what about other trucks? Well, obviously it's too early to know for sure. I mean, we've only seen what's in the trailer, but here's my list of most likely to be included in the game. We got Dragon, Bakugan Dragonoid, Earthshaker, Northern Nightmare, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior, Monster Mutt, Monster Mutt Rottweiler, Son of a Digger, Grave Digger the Legend, Soldier Fortune, Whiplash, and of course the Monster Jam Stunt Truck. These are all trucks that were owned by Fell. They were in the first Steel Titans. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be included in the second Steel Titans. They're kind of obvious choices. They're popular trucks. They probably are going to be in this game too. The next set of trucks are also owned by Fell. They were also in Steel Titans, but they may not be as popular or may not be as well known as some of the other trucks. Basically, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't make the cut, but you never know. They probably will be in there, but you don't know. That includes Alien Invasion, Doomsday, Captain's Curse, Pirate's Curse, 
Sparkle Smash, Octonator, Backwards Bob, and possibly to cut down the number of Monster Mutts, they may choose to not include Monster Mutt Poodle, Monster Mutt Husky, and Monster Mutt Junkyard Dog, which would definitely be a shame because Junkyard Dog is a fan favorite for sure. Finally, this last list of trucks, they were in Steel Titans, but they're not owned by Fell. Some of them don't even run in Monster Jam events anymore, and so there's licensing hurdles that may prevent them from being put into Showdown. Uh, I really wouldn't be surprised if these were cut altogether, but it's a shame because some of these are my favorites, you know? So we've got Ice Cream Man, Higher Education, Jurassic Attack, Gas Monkey Garage, Crush Station, and sadly, Avenger. Oh. <laughs> so one thing that we haven't talked about yet is customization. Of course, there has been no mention of any features in the game yet, but Milestone created Hot Wheels Unleashed, like we already talked about, which has one of the most robust car customization features in any game. In fact, that is something that I personally have spent hours on in the game just fixing up my car to make it look nice. So will we be able to make our own Nitro versus Neon set of El Toro Locos? Maybe, I don't know. Can we fashion a Bigfoot out of Blue Thunder? I don't know, I hope so. The game looks like it's gonna be a pretty accessible arcade style racer and not a hardcore simulation like Monster Truck Championship. So I doubt that we'll be able to create a custom truck from the ground up, like mixing and matching parts, tuning up the engine, that kind of stuff. But if Hot Wheels is any indication of the type of cosmetic customization options that they're working on for Showdown, I'm excited to see what they have in store for us. Last but not least, I'm gonna leave you with a list of trucks that I would like to see included. Unfortunately, I'm not holding my breath on any of these uh, because licensing agreements are probably gonna be too much, too big of a hurdle for them to overcome, but, a man can dream, can't he? <laughs> so first off, of course, Avenger, my favorite truck. I would love to see Avenger in a few different variants. I mean, come on, imagine a split paint scheme Avenger in uh, this Monster Jam showdown. That would be so awesome. You know what, while we're at it, let's do all of Team Scream. <laughs> We've got Axe and Brutus, uh, Rage, Spike, Wrecking Crew. Can you imagine Wrecking Crew versus Earthshaker? How cool would that be? <laughs> Uh, let's see, Recreation, Black Pearl. Uh, oh, all of the new Marvel trucks. Uh, Batman, Superman, uh, Scooby-Doo. 